Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And today we're going to take a look at uh, my latest eBay purchase. This is a Marks number 666 Diecast 242 steamer uh, with headlight and smoke. And uh, I got a pretty good bargain on this one. I, I took a chance, uh, and uh, in the description it mentioned that the reverse unit was sticking, the headlight was not functioning, and it said that there was a problem with a smoke unit. So um, I was going to film the uh, the unboxing, but actually I had a camera malfunction. And uh, so, I, you know, this is take two. Uh, but I haven't done anything to the locomotive other than taking it out of the box, taking it out of the packaging. So we're going to explore. I, you know, I was, I was willing to take a risk because these Marks locomotives are really easy to work on. And uh, it's really hard to find one that's completely dead. So before we take it apart, the Mark 666, well, let's start at the beginning. I did a, a little poll on my page to see what folks uh, thought of Mark's trains. And actually about 16% uh, about of those who responded said they had never heard of Mark's trains. And uh, about another 16% uh, said, nah, Mark's are just cheap toys and I stay away from them. Well. Uh, well, one, let's inform those who don't know about Marks, and two, maybe we can change some minds about uh, the cheap toy part. Now, certainly, you know, these Marks steamers are not like a, uh, you know, a, a Lionel Scale Hudson or any of the, you know, Vision Line products they make today, but compared to Lionel starter set locomotives, they're pretty competitive. They run well, they're easy to work on, uh, they're pretty much bulletproof. The 666 is one of three die-cast steam locomotives that Marx produced. The first was the number 999, which was a smaller 242. It was scaled to go with 3 16th inch scale cars, and it came out in the late 1930s, right before World War II. So it was their first die-cast steamer. After the war, they came out with the 333 Pacific 462, a much larger locomotive, and then last came the 242666, which kind of replaced the 999 in uh, in the lineup. And these were made from the mid-1950s all the way to the end of Mark's production in uh, 1974. And the die-cast 666 is very similar to the plastic-bodied 1666, which we looked at in a previous video. The details are not exact, but under the hood, it's virtually an identical locomotive. So, like I said, the description on the auction said there were problems with the E unit and there are problems with the smoke unit and the headlight doesn't work. Let's put it on the track and see what's actually wrong. We'll diagnose it and uh, see what we need to do to get it up and running. Okay, so we can already see, one, there doesn't really seem to be anything wrong with the reverse unit. It is functioning forward, reverse, forward, reverse. Secondly, the headlight, yeah, the headlight is dead. Now, smoke, we haven't had a chance to warm this thing up yet. I'm going to um, hold it still and apply power and see if we can get any action out of the smoke unit. All right, and as you can see, when we uh, hold it still, apply power, we do have some smoke action going on. Um, believe it or not, while this would be uh, kind of typical of what Lionel smoke unit produces, there's a little light for marks. Um, so um, we'll see what happens as we uh, as we break it in. Um, I might have to go in there and. Uh, cleans himself out because generally marks actually smoke a little bit more than this. It seems like maybe something's down in there clogging the chamber a little bit. I think the description scared some people away on the auction. I only paid about 20 bucks for this, um, which is pretty low for a 666. Normally these are, you know, 40 to 60 depending on condition. Now one thing that kept it down uh, maybe was that it came with his Lionel tender the, uh, instead of a true marks tender. So that might have turned some people off, but on the other hand, operators tend to use the Lionel tenders anyway, so they can use the Lionel trucks 
and couplers instead of the marks. So I don't know if that affected the value as much as uh, what the description said. Now marks made their locomotives like they made their toys um, pretty easy to work on and uh, not with a lot of specialty parts you know things that were typically around the household so we've got a, a slotted screw on either side and these are common hardware size screws I believe it's a 440 but I'm not 100% sure and so I'm going to remove that screw and that screw and you can pull the smoke box front off to access the light bulb All right, the screws are removed. Let's pull the smoke box front off of here. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, <laughs> we have not a non-working light bulb. We have a broken light bulb. Okay, so the headlight on this one has me a little bit perplexed. First of all, yes, the headlight was out. It was completely broken. But uh, looking at the headlight mount here, every... 666 and 1666 that I worked on up to this point has this type of headlight holder where it's simply uh, it's simply a bracket and even though you could use the screw mount bulb uh, it's just a matter of and you do this upside down push that in there and the little clip holds it in place and that's all there is to it this one looks like someone has modified it you see this part of the clip is still there but the top seems to be missing and they put in a uh, regular screw mount in the bottom. Uh, so I don't know if that's a factory modification or whether that's something that a previous owner did. Meanwhile, I figured while I was at it, this bulb actually came from another locomotive, but it's not working. So I looked up the specs on it. This is an E10 screw base, and this is a 12 volt bulb. So I went to a local specialty store that handles specialty light bulbs and batteries and other electronic parts and that, and asked for an E10 screw base 12 volt bulb, which they gave me this, which costs $4.99 for a single bulb. And what I find is when I try to screw this in, the uh, globe is too big. It's ever so slightly bigger than the one there that came out and uh, so it won't go in. I got to thinking well why not just upgrade this thing to LEDs. So what I found on Amazon looking under E10 12 volt LEDs uh, is, is this little packet and instead of $4.99 for a single bulb that didn't fit anyway uh, it's like 11 bucks for a pack of 10 and not only do you get the bulbs but should you need to be doing a brand new installation, you get a set of 10 bases as well, which might come in handy for uh, mounting these in structures. But uh, bottom line is this is a perfect fit, both for the clip type mount. It goes right there. And of course this one's going to be finicky. There we go. And it clips right in or and so you say, Mike, why did you get 12 volts um, when, you know, we use more like 18 volts on our trains? Well, marks are pretty much set to top out at 14 to 15 anyway. Um, the reason I did that was uh, the 12 volt is what came with it. Um, these were 12 volt bulbs and they lasted for 30 some years. So I, I thought I would try it and say, well, 12 volt for 12 volt. And uh, what I find is these do work fine, uh, even if you crank the voltage up all the way on the Lionel transformer to 18 volts. At least for a short time, I wouldn't leave it there. The limiting resistor, which is built in to the bulb, you don't have to do anything with the resistor. You just screw it in and replace the bulb. And uh, because this thing is weird, I'm using the pliers to screw it in. Um, but I find that I have no problem whatsoever um, the, uh, the resistor is robust enough to handle, uh, at least short term, you know, 15, 16, 18 volts without any problem. So I screw that in and you will see that, uh, that's going to work just fine. So to replace the headlight, again, someone, 
I highly recommend doing this. Uh, I'll start doing this on my mods when I get to the light bulbs. Is adding this extension wire makes it a whole lot easier um, to do this. You just have to make sure that you push the wire in far enough so it's not really sitting up against the heat element or the smoke unit. But you just pop that back in there, make sure your screw holes are lined up, screw it together, and you're ready to roll. Yep. Just to show how easy it is to work on these, we're going to uh, take the uh, take the shell off. So step one is we've got these two larger screws, one there and one there. And uh, we'll get a slotted screwdriver and we'll take those out. With that taken care of, we can loosen the front of the locomotive, just wiggle it down, and we are apart. Now, if you need to separate the, um, uh, if you need to remove the headlight in order to get the shell completely off, um, you can pull, well, it's hard to see here, but the headlight wire is just attached right here with this little bracket and so we can push in on that pull out here and the headlight is free and the shell is free and now we have just the motor uh, but you can do many uh, of your repair activities without ever uh, completely separating the two but if you do the secret is this little bracket right here and so obviously to put it back together you want to push down on that while you put the wire back through. Now it looks like someone has lengthened this wire, which is not a bad idea. Uh, because the original, I believe the original length stopped right about here. And it can be um, kind of tricky to get that wire in there. So they soldered and uh, put some shrink wrap on there, extended the length of this wire. And that's going to make it a whole lot easier to, uh, to fix that headlight in there. So... Uh, uh, if you get the opportunity, that might be a modification you want to do. All right, so here's how the motor works. And, this, and again, this motor looks just like the 1666 plastic. We've got the smoke unit up here in the front. We have the reversing unit here. And then we have the motor here. Here we have our coil. Here is our armature and our commutator. And we have a brush here and a second brush right here underneath. There we go. <clears throat> underneath the side rod. If you do have a sticky E-unit, the best thing to do is get yourself uh, some good contact cleaner. I use this CRC26. You might have your other favorite. Some use TV, um, TV tuner cleaner, uh, but those can leave a residue. Um, and as you also want to make sure plastic safe, as it says here on the label here. Um, and you spray it real good, you know, put a paper towel under it and let it sit overnight. That gets most of the gunk out repeated if necessary. This one, I'm looking at the commutator face. The copper looks maybe a little bit dirty, but it's not in bad shape. And the brushes, from what I can see, look to be in good shape. So I'm going to leave it as is. But if you needed to take it apart and get in here, you can remove this screw and you can remove this nut and this nut and your um, brush plate pops right off. You can uh, replace the brushes. Uh, actually, you can replace the brushes without popping that off just by you pop the springs out, put new brushes in, pop the springs in. That saves you a lot of trouble with that. But if you need to get in here and clean the commutator face, you can do that. Um, unscrew these three, pop off your brush plate, and then you can clean the face of the commutator if it's gunky. Okay, and for comparison, this is a 1666 motor in the front, my new 66 in the back. And again, this is one that I'm in the process of taking apart um, and, and fixing. Uh, it came, somebody had started a repair before, and uh, these are missing, so I'm going to have to replace um, those nuts and I can see right here, you know, there's some uh, um, corrosion or not corrosion, but there's some 
Um, there's some dirt here on the commutator face, so I'm going to have to take that apart and clean this one up. But as far as how the motors are put together, these are pretty. These are completely interchangeable, uh, completely swappable, and many people do. Sometimes to put a traction tired 1666. Where's my traction tire? Again, this is filthy. Okay, well, what's left of the traction tire is right there. Uh, this one is in bad shape. Um, so uh, some of the 1666s have traction tires. Here, I'll show you this one, which is in better shape. Yeah, right there. And so they combine that with the die cast weight of the 666 to get some extra pulling power. Or sometimes if you've got a 1666 with a side smoker with a chest smoking mechanism and you want it in the diecast 666, you swap it out. Uh, and that is another reason why if you're going to buy marks, always flip it over, always check underneath here to make sure uh, you've got a double reduction versus a single reduction motor um, because these can be swapped out with the cheaper 400, 490 motors, some of which are single reduction. And so you don't want to um, pay for a good 666 that will go through line L switches if it's got a, uh, a 400 motor that does not go through line L switches. All right, so let's put it back together. My first step is I'm going to replace the headlight wire. So I'm gonna push down on this bracket, push the wire back in its hole. Okay, we are through. Release it, the spring holds it in place. Uh, looking down the smoke unit, I can see the wick here. I'm, I'm just gonna check that there, I'm gonna make sure that the wick is centered here and that there's plenty of airflow around the outside of our smoke unit here to help the airflow and that might help our smoke output a little bit. All right, so the headlight is back in place. We've uh, double checked the smoke unit and so now, all we do, let's take this extra wire and pull it out of the way. We're going to put it in front first, or actually, sorry, we're going to put it in back first. You see the slots here on the back go against this plate here on the back of the shell. So you slide that in. So those are lined up. And then you wiggle everything back in so that your screw holes line up. And then it's just a matter of replacing our frame screws, our shell screws. Fitting tight. All right. And then we're going to put our smoke box front back on with our headlight. Push it back in there. Uh-huh. Turn it over. Make sure the wire's in there and out of the way. Gently wiggle it back into place. Line up our screw holes. All right, and then lastly, even though this one looks to be in pretty good shape, I'm gonna clean the wheels real quick. And all I do to do that is I give these a quick spray. I do the uh, pilot and pony trucks as well. And we're going to put the transformer on about half voltage, lay it on the track. And we're going to run it back and forth here for a second with a cleaner on there. And with that, with friction on the track, it's going to speed it up real quick. Okay, and here we have the final product. We have our $20 666 we bought from eBay with a Lionel tender. We have an e-unit that on further inspection really didn't need anything done to it. We have a broken headlight that's been replaced with LEDs. And we have a smoke unit that was working a little bit. Uh, and now with uh, just a little bit of uh, cleaning around it to uh, help the airflow, it is smoking very nicely. So let's see the completed project.
Just in case you couldn't see the smoke from the heavy lights, here's a close-up on how it smokes now. As you can see, it's even overfilling the chamber a little bit. Whew. And that is some serious smoke. So there it is, the Marks 666 Diecast 242, made from the mid-1950s to the mid-1970s. Maybe not uh, true to scale, and certainly not with all the features of a... Lionel Legacy Steamer, but certainly not with the price tag either. These are fun, dependable locomotives. You're comparable to your Lionel 242s, 442s. They run well. They pull well. They are very easy to work on, as you can see. Uh, they're pretty much bulletproof. You get the headlight, you get the smoke, sometimes you get the sound. Um, so if you're just looking for something that's fun, and dependable and budget, maybe you should give these Marks locomotives a try, the 666 or the plastic version, the 1666. Maybe even check out a 333 or a 999 while you're at it. So again, I hope you like the video. If you do, like it, share it, subscribe it, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, and until next time, keep those trains running.